A deal on eviction moratoriums looms as a second stimulus agreement is around the corner. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is Afternoons LLA. Hope you're good and safe. This is um, our two-hour programming block every afternoon. Thank you for joining me. It starts at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time with the check, then goes to um, Hazard Pay at 4 p.m., next FPUC at 4.30, and finally Rent Assistance every day at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You know, Rent Assistance and Rent Eviction Moratoriums and Foreclosure um, Moratoriums is one of those subjects that I have been dealing, explaining to you on a daily basis of empowering you with how quickly and how dramatically the situation can change overnight. And I want to explain that a little bit more in this video right to you, because what's important for you to understand is that if an eviction moratorium is part of the second stimulus package that is ultimately approved, and it likely is, more about that in a second, then how quickly could your life get changed? It's literally that minute. Let me explain to you the nature of what's going on, because no one really takes the time to explain the nuance of um, of, of passing legislation. When an eviction moratorium is passed on a federal level that says you may not evict American citizens during the pandemic until, and they're going to say until what date it is, maybe it's next year, maybe they say it's until the pandemic is over, maybe they say February of 2021. I mean, we just don't know what, the, what date they're going to put it. But once they pass that, and the minute that the president puts his pen to the paper and signs it as law, guess what? It stops everything. And nothing could be better news to report than that. That is the hallelujah moment of everything that we have all but gone through together. Whether you're Kevin Lee out of Texas, who, you know, um, was nearly on the street, whether you're Shervon um, Kervon, who was one of my early EIDL videos as viewers as well, who was living out of his home because he couldn't get his loan. I have so many viewers who were displaced, about to be displaced, or, or are facing being thrown out of their homes, whether it's an apartment or a house because of this pandemic, I feel for you, but I wanna, what I wanna educate those of you who have something looming is the following. The minute he signs that as law, the president, it stops everything. And that's what's incredible great news. And people don't really inherently understand that because one, <laughs> Those horrible broadcast news reporters aren't explaining it to you. Two, it's not inherently clear. And three, we just don't have that type of discussion. We talk about unemployment benefits. We talk about a stimulus check. But we don't talk about things that are a little bit more strange and confusing like evictions or moratoriums or foreclosures or forbearances, mortgage forbearances. And what I want to empower you to understand is that the moment that that becomes a law, you're protected as a renter. It doesn't matter where in the food chain or the process you are. If the landlord says, I'm a, if you are early on and the landlord has written you a letter saying, get out soon, or the landlord has served you with an eviction proceeding, or the landlord already has you in court, or the, the matter is about to get adjudicated in the court, none of that matters. As a wonderful squirrel goes off set, I wish you had seen him, he's very cute. Uh, none of that matters. What matters is that the law was passed. It stops everything. You can stay in your home. The landlord cannot change the rent, cannot change the locks. He cannot change the lease. He cannot change the rent amount. He cannot um, hurt your credit. He cannot do anything to get you out of the home or intimidate you or anything like that. There's incredible protections. And, you know, what I've warned you about is important for me to tell you the bad and the good and the ugly and the happy and the, the purple shirt or the blue shirt. There's going to be some landlords that don't follow the law. We know that. And so the law will be passed and there ultimately may be some landlords that don't care about the law. They'll act like they don't know the law or they'll just sort of ignore the law. And they may, you know, change the locks on you, even though there's an eviction moratorium, which they can't. 
They may try to change the rent, which they can't. They may try to hurt your credit, which they can't. And so I need to empower you to know what are these, what's going to happen. And I want you to share this with other people. Ultimately, one of the deepest concerns I have is for viewers who are, uh, for not for viewers, but for people who ha don't have the ability to view this channel. There's some people out there that don't have Wi-Fi, that don't have a cell phone, that don't have the ability to access YouTube, and so they don't know what's going on. All they know is what someone else tells them, their friend. And so if you have a friend like that, and they don't have access to the ability to watch YouTube, they don't have access to a television set or, or, or you know, can't afford a $800 a month subscription to a, to a bad newspaper that, I don't, that no one reads anymore. If they don't have access to this information, they don't know. Please tell them. I mean, please do that as, as, my, as my wish to help someone else. Because ultimately, the people that may be hurt the most during, uh, during the wonderfulness, the hallelujah moment of an eviction moratorium, are the poorest people who don't have access to the information. They may be taken advantage of the most. Kamala Harris, who, as you know, is a senator in California. She's a, form, she's a lawyer. She's a former prosecutor. She's also Joe Biden's uh, vice presidential potential nominee. Um, saw this problem. And so her eviction moratorium bill, which is one of four or five other bills that are in the Senate, says, hey, I like the, the HEROES Act. I like the eviction moratorium. The president likes the eviction moratorium. Everyone wants eviction moratorium. Everyone's in favor of eviction moratorium, well, except Mitch McConnell and his stupid bill, but everyone else is. But Kamala Harris says, yeah, but I, for, I foresee some problems with landlords not following the law. And, you know, maybe I'm premature on this video, but my job is always to tell you stuff ahead of time because when it happens, it may be too late. So if eviction, if the bill became law, you know, next Monday, uh, and eviction moratorium became in place that day, I want you to have already by then telling your friends, hey, if it becomes law, we can't be thrown out on the street. LLA told us. Um, we got to be very careful because, you know, Joe Schmo, our landlord, is not a good guy. He may do some really crazy things. The same thing is, uh, is, is confronting property owners and their mortgages. Now, I got to tell you, it's a little bit different with mortgages, and I'll tell you why. With banks, they don't want your property. They don't want to foreclose. It's different than landlords who rather sometimes have you on the street. Some landlords rather have you on the street. Why? Because they want to raise the rent. They think they can get more rent. They don't like you as a tenant. Um, they want to sell the building. Sometimes landlords have a motivation to get people out, just in general. Banks don't want to foreclose. They don't like it. So that's really the good news. If you are in your home, you can't make the mortgage, you're facing the mortgage for foreclosure, and you're watching my channel say, hey, I also said that, that we may have protections on a second stimulus package if approved for our mortgage. Yes. So the minute the president signs into the law, that would prevent the bank from foreclosing on your property. Now, here's what's different. The banks don't really want to foreclose. Why? because they are not in the business of owning real estate and single family homes and apartment buildings and commercial buildings. They're not in the business of owning all these things. And it doesn't serve them any well because they want mortgages to be paid. They want the principal and interest to be paid and they don't want all this other stuff. And so ultimately what happens is banks take up a lot of properties. They have to figure out how to resell the properties or do something so they don't carry the properties and then come from financial ruin. Yeah. Uh, Banks having tons of foreclosed properties causes financial ruin. It is what is one of the key ingredients of the financial cliff, which we are at now or over. Some people, some econom economists now say we have fallen over the financial cliff. It's a little bit too late. Congress is too late to the game and that the situation is going to get very bad very seriously, very quickly. <sighs> Bottom line is I'm keeping you motivated, keep you inspired, keep you hopeful. You know, every time I do a hazard pay video, there's always new economic data that day about unemployment, about um, evictions, new data about foreclosures. And as I sit here, I think to myself, do I just compete, 
completely regurgitate the more economic data. It just all is the same subject matter. It's the same data every day that, hey, people are being evicted. Hey, people are losing their homes. Hey, people, foreclosures are happening. And then there's those people in Congress. It's just like, okay, do I do it every day? Well, the numbers are out there. Numbers are out there. 50% of people are facing eviction from their apartments as, as the very moment across the United, entire United States. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican state or Democrat state. Um, mortgage foreclosures are looming like no one has ever seen. The number of eviction cases in courthouses is up to 40 million in just a few weeks. A number of no one has seen since the Great Depression. So all that data is out there. The question is, how quickly can your life change for the great overnight? And we already now know that answer because of this video. Literally overnight. It's something quite spectacular about law. When a bill is passed and something becomes law, it changes something literally that instant. And so... If it became law on Monday afternoon, the president signs it Monday afternoon and it has an eviction moratorium in there, and on Monday morning you were packing up your goods and thinking, I got to go move in with, with my friend down the street. I don't know where to live. It literally would change your life. It's that absolutely incredible of how an eviction moratorium helps people. And, you know, I shouldn't even have to be making this video. Here comes my tirade. I shouldn't have to make this video because every major country around the world has an eviction moratorium in place. It has not expired. It is not expiring while people are on vacation. Congress is on vacation. They've had an eviction moratorium in place because of the pandemic. But this Congress allowed their eviction moratorium to expire while they're on vacation. And now they're battling to get it passed going forward. A lot of people have asked me a question, hey, can the president pass an executive order to give an eviction moratorium uh, to sort of, you know, um, usurp this whole delay? Yes, he can. The president can do an ex executive order for a lot of the stuff of this, uh, this second stimulus package. One of the most, one of the easiest things for an executive order is an eviction moratorium. Because as you and I sit here today, it literally, we can, we can write it ourselves. It's literally three sentences. Uh, there's a problem with pandemic and millions are facing eviction, hence this order shall say no uh, tenant may be evicted until January of next year. Done. Signed. Donald Trump. It's that. It's literally that simple. So yeah, he can do that. And he may, he may do that. He has threatened to really step in and get this moving. So the core of what we're at is I want you to understand that it may not be a good situation today, but it's going to be a great situation very soon for purposes of moratoriums. Ultimately, there's a lot of moving parts out there. And what you need to know is that um, I'm here for you. You're here with me. The comments overnight in all the videos, I got to say, here's a personal note. The comments in the videos overnight were really just charming. They really were nice people helping one another expressing their, their their hopes and their wishes and their kindness. God was all that junk from like a few months ago where there's this mean people sort of jumping in and getting flagged. And it's just like, get out of here, get out of here. Go back to Kentucky. And it was really a nice group of people. Um, as you know, on, I think it was Monday, this channel reached 130,000 subscribers on its exactly its 100th day. And I said thank you because I had asked for, you know, an extra little push on Sunday to get us to 130. And on, on that day, I said, hey, you know, our goal is to get to 150 by next Monday. I think we're at 136 already. So, wow, let's keep going. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. People ask me, I'm not getting alerts when a new video goes live. To get alert, this is what you do. You go to the front of this page and you click the subscribe button and the alert button. And that will tee you up.